Hey, what's up, ham fam? This is Josh KI6NAZ, and I want to talk to you today about FCC Enforcement Advisory DA18980. Now, this is affectionately known as the Baofeng slash Chinese radio band. Now, it's more nuanced than that, and we're going to walk through some of those nuances. I think it's important to talk about this because it's seemingly the most important thing I have gotten message on uh, since the 24th of September when it came out. So, to kind of quell me answering the same question over and over again, I'm going to come to you in video form and try to break some of this down. So before I break into some of my criticisms and defining what this is all about, I want to give a big thumbs up yeah, thumbs up to the FCC, specifically Laura Smith. Laura Smith, after this was posted, has responded to many people, both in text format, in email, and voice format, uh, which was ended up on YouTube as a video. I have to say thank you to Laura Smith and the FCC for keeping the lines of communication open and being willing to talk to us, even when we're confused, in some cases, pretty angry over this. So at first glance, when you read the title of this advisory, note, two-way VHF radios may not be imported, advertised, or sold in the United States unless they comply with the commission's rules. It doesn't seem that bad, right? There's been plenty of news stories of people taking Chinese radios, specifically Chinese radios, that have a very wide capability to transmit on frequencies that they're not really allowed to and interfering with ambulances and other emergency people and just being places they're not supposed to be. And part of the reason for that is some of them are not certified by the FCC to either be Part 90 or Part 95 compliant, Part 95 being FRS and GMRS radio, right? So it doesn't seem that bad. And if it just stopped at that point, we really wouldn't have much of a video to talk about, would we? We would just say, well, we're amateurs. We're the licensed individual. It's our responsibility to make sure we're transmitting in our frequency privileged space. But there's a clause towards the bottom for amateur radio. And that's kind of where this whole thing becomes problematic. So you see, if it was just a matter of having a radio that wasn't certified and using it in places it was never intended to be, and the FCC states firmly that we're not going to accept that, we're going to police it, and we're going to fine you. I don't think anybody has any problem with that. I don't have any problem with that. But the stipulation at the end, let me read it. So the amateur radio exception. There is one exception to this certification requirement. If a device is capable of operating only on frequencies that the FCC has allocated for use by amateur radio servants licensees, it does not require FCC equipment authorization. And an amateur licensee may use his or her license to operate such radios. However, many two-way radios that purport to operate on amateur frequencies also operates on frequencies that extend beyond the designated amateur frequencies. If, if a two-way radio VHF UHF radio is capable of operating outside of the amateur frequency bands. It cannot be imported, advertised, sold, or, this is the point, operated within the United States without an FCC equipment certification. And lastly, even if a two-way VHF UHF radio operates solely within the amateur frequencies, the operator is required to have an amateur radio license, sure, to operate the device and must otherwise comply with all applicable rules. Hmm. So herein lies the rub with this whole thing. Up until now and the proliferation of Chinese radios, hams, amateur radio operators, have had a long lineage of tinkering around with radios and using radios on the amateur frequency space, right? On the ARS. And not bleeding over into places they're not supposed to. We're pretty good at self-policing, and we accept when we're told if there's an issue, and we generally handle it very well. There has been no need for a clarification saying, you must only operate on the ARS, amateur radio spectrum, and your radios that you do operate on the ARS with cannot operate physically, cannot operate outside of them. I see no reason for this clause. I see no reason for this addendum, this side-loading, if you will, on this advisory. If you want to go after people that are illegally transmitting with Chinese radios, amateur radio or not, please do so. Go after them and find them. Do what you must do. 
But if we, the amateur radio operators, whose whole service is based on hobby and experimentation of radio technology, then telling us that we are not allowed to operate a radio within the ARS legally that has wider transmit capability, I think it's going a step further than we've ever needed. It's setting a precedence that we've never been required to or need to have. The government, the FCC in this case, is overstepping its bounds. It's going into an area that needed no policing and has required amateurs who are lawful in their operation to comply via their own action to make themselves right in terms of the law. So for instance, if on October 23rd it was completely fine for me to pick up this radio and transmit with, and on October 24th I'm now compelled to open this up and chirp with my programming cable and block out all the frequencies that are not amateur radio frequencies, I'm being regulated against for doing nothing wrong. I've broken no laws, I've operated lawfully. It's stepping into an area that there is no problem and requires no government regulation, so why are we having it? If you want to pursue people illegally using Chinese radios, go right ahead, I support that. Throw the book at them, find them, do what you want to do there. If by illegally we mean they're using this to transmit on a frequency, to transmit on a frequency in which they have no license and no certification to do so, fine. But if I'm an amateur radio operator using this lawfully on my amateur radio spectrum frequencies, then there's no reason that this can't have wider transmit capability. Now you may be saying to yourself, well if you're not going to transmit outside of your frequencies, then why do you need them on your radio? That's like saying if you've done nothing wrong, why don't you consent to a search? If you've done nothing wrong, why won't you compel or capitulate to all these different regulations? That's not how being free works. That's not how being innocent until proven guilty works. I've done nothing wrong, I'm not transmitting illegally, and I've done nothing that tells the government that I must comply and take further action to take something that was deemed completely legal on one day and then have to change my lifestyle and modify this on the other. Now you may be saying, but seriously, no, seriously, you're not going to transmit on the frequencies, what's the problem? Well, I like to listen to NOAA. Well, I like to listen to police frequencies. If I block those out via chirp, I'm not going to be able to receive them anymore. Sure, you can set them up to transmit, or to block transmit within chirp, you can do that, but then Who's to say that the term operation then one day from the FCC's point of view doesn't become something like I must lock it down to only receive on amateur now, frequency? You're probably thinking, well, that's kind of a slippery slope, isn't it? Shouldn't we make that argument when that time comes? No, because we've done nothing wrong. We don't need to capitulate. We don't need to look five years down the road after two, three, five more of these regulations and go, huh, we should have really not, we should have fought this from the moment it came out originally. And guys, this is how regulations work. This is how governments work. They're doing a good over here. Let's say like 80% of this is really good stuff. We, we want to stop these illegal Chinese radio operations, importation, manufacturing of, on the United States soil. Got it. But there's this side load thing that doesn't exist. And what we're doing is we're saying, hey, it's actually really easy to comply to this, so I'm just going to comply. Well, then the next one comes, and then the next one, and the next one. And all of a sudden, remember that CB radio you modified to work on 10 meters? Well, that's outside the amateur radio bands. And you go, well, but that advert, or that notice only says VHF, UHF. Okay, interesting, right. What about Motorola radios? What about DMR radios? What about our SDRs that have TX capability, like the Hack RF? There's all kinds of these little gray areas where we, the lawful operating ham radio amateur, now has to go scrambling off and spending our calories to figure out how we're going to defend ourselves when we've done nothing wrong. There's no reason for this side-loaded addendum to this enforcement notice. It doesn't need to exist. There's no reason for it. So I compel you, if you are interested, there will be a link in the description to a petition. I'd like to know if people feel the way I do. And if you feel the way I do, sign the petition. All you need is an email and your first and last name. You don't need your call sign, you don't need anything else. I'd like to know what you think. More than that, post in the comments. And if you're willing, we've got a Discord, link will also be in the description, where we have a political and debate channel. We're having a 
huge discussion on it. It's, it's constantly changing, and I appreciate that Dominic, who's talked to Laura, and, and the ex excerpts that I read came from, uh, in part, from what we've learned later on the 28th of September, so the link for his article will be in the description. I'm at a loss for this whole thing. Um, I can point you, although I won't in this video because this is about amateur radio, to other areas of government regulations that were small little steps and now we look back and we go, how did we get here? Do I think amateur radio is going to go that way? No. Did I do anything wrong to deserve this new addendum, this new precedence, precedence from whence there was no precedence? No. And neither do you. So let's do what we can to put the message out that we are not okay with this. And hopefully someone listens. Okay? Thank you very much. I'm Hashinasi, KI6NAZ, and I'll talk to you later. Forgot one thing, and I'll leave you on this message. In a time of emergency, we're allowed to transmit with anything we have at our disposal to save life and save property. If you program your radio, your Baofeng, to not have access to all the frequencies that it can, and an emergency happens, and that's all you have, which we just learned about a boater lost for 50 days plus at sea who used a radio like a Baofeng to save himself. Hey, at least you followed this dumb rule, but you don't have a, bat, a radio that can save your life potentially, right? But hey, at least we followed this really easy law, right?